All right, happy Wednesday. Welcome to New Wave Traders. We're gonna be diving into Bitcoin and DXY in today's analysis, taking a look at the bull and the bear scenarios, as well as the invalidations as to when one path is confirmed over the other. If you're brand new to the channel, then welcome. My name is Shiloh. I'm a full-time trader in the crypto market since 2017, and I'm focused on becoming the industry leader and creating successful traders. So if you're struggling to see results, check out the link that I have down in the description to my link tree. And that'll get you started with all the resources that I have available to you to help you decide if New Wave Traders is a good fit. So without further ado, let's go ahead. We're going to dive into the weekly time frame on Bitcoin right now. We're going to take a look. I've got two counts and I'll tell you which one I'm biased towards and then I'll tell you the invalidations as well. Inside of our group coaching channel, which is only accessible if you join up in the New Wave Academy, we are doing a 10K to 100K account challenge right now and we just passed our first month in September for that. So if you want to come over and join us in there as well, then while you're learning, you can also be following along with our trading challenge and earning while learning as I like to put it so come check that out again that's going to be a free training to understand the new wave systems at tradethewave.com worth checking that one out as well so my biased overall larger count here is going to be a regular flat pattern and this is where we're currently inside of this B wave right here in the middle looking for a pullback to basically 22 to 21 K and then a pivot up to about 40 to 45 K. So this starts to fall apart. If we come underneath the 0.618 retracement and we get a market structure break sitting at $20,000. So we do not want to come down underneath there. And right now our one to one extension of this lake here coming down falls exactly on our 0.5 Fibonacci level at 22,702. Now this is on logarithmic scale and if we flip over to a regular scale, the targets go up slightly a little bit. We've got now at this point, we've got a one to one that falls in alignment with our 0.618 exactly, which is at 21,684. So basically 21,684 to 22.3K is the target box that I'm looking for this to draw down into right now. And we're gonna go into the one hour time frame, and I'll break down this internal structure right here for you as well and show you how I'm looking to trade this and mm -hmm. how where the invalidations are for that as well. Okay, so, but out here on the weekly time frame, I definitely wanna be focused more on a logarithmic um, scale. And this tells me too, if you look at these extensions that I've pulled, look at how beautifully these match up. So. If we pull back down to 22 to 21K, and then we get a one-to-one -one extension that falls right into our bearish order block, which is where this uh, range, where the most buying was taking place and the selling dominant move towards the downside. So that's a huge area for us to come back up and revisit. And then we have the point of breakdown order block, which is sitting at basically 38 to $40,000. So I love the confluence when my extensions match up with major order blocks as well. And that's exactly what's happening here. But in order for us to hit 45K, we need to come down to this 22.3K level. All right. And so we'll talk about that on the one hour time frame of how we're going to get down there. But also too, more and more importantly, is understanding how we won't get down there and what exactly is gonna happen here in the short term and, and when things shift for us. Okay, now if we make it up at 45K, I do expect another leg back towards the downside that's gonna be of equal magnitude to this drop over here. A very similar structure for this is going to be uh, SPX, so S&P 500, if you look between the years 2000 to 2009, you're gonna see a very similar pattern here where it's just a sideways market. And that's really all I'm projecting for Bitcoin too, is that I think for the next couple of years, we'll probably just have a sideways market here, which means in the middle, it'll feel like a bull market. We might even break a new high potentially with it. But for the most part, we're just gonna be in this sideways flat um, and that's gonna be multi-year long. Okay, so really in this area, trading thrives. And the reason for this is that anybody that's just dollar cost averaging into this, they're gonna be underwater for years and eventually it, it'll probably take another year over here before they even get to break even of their dollar cost average entries where we can make that move towards the upside. And you can see this if you go over to um, SPX, and you just scoot back from 2000 to 2009, you're gonna see very similar patterns where we saw a lot of different corrections here taking place. So I've talked about this in the past before, it's worth bringing it up again here too, just so you can see what this pattern does look like. But here's a, for 10 years, okay, anybody that was dollar cost averaging into this, you really didn't start to see um, 
new highs that you could retain the earnings on basically for this bull market over here until probably midway in this bounce here in 2010. Okay, so, um, and I remember talking to my parents about this in regards to they were sitting underwater on their mortgages and, and homes and so forth and all their investments and everything and it took 10 years of just sideways market. You're not making anything in that because you're giving it all back if you're just waiting. So trading thrives in this because we have the ability to short these big moves towards the downside and we have the ability to trade internally inside of them as well, which means that we can compound our profits over time when dollar cost averaging is just gonna be staying neutral slash staying underwater. All right, so I just wanna be able to give that example there. It's also a great time to be learning how to navigate the markets from an intelligent technical analysis standpoint because you can use it for long-term investing as well. So my long-term, my swing trades, long-term investing accounts, all of that I use analysis to do what I call intelligent investing, right? It's where I'm actively dollar cost averaging into the market at really low good technical points. Like the last time we... we filled up our bags over here was between um, June of 2022 and the low here of November 2022. My average entry here sitting right about 19.5 to 20K. And so again, if this is gonna move up all the way to 45, right, that's gonna be, I'm gonna be able to capitalize on that entire swing and that entire move here. Um, we took some profits off with the reversal divergence sitting at um, 28, 29K here. And I'm just holding on to the rest right now with the expectation that we can hold a higher low here and pivot back up. And I'll be looking at this area right here when we pivot, because the other count here is an ABC straight down where we've already completed that B wave. And this is gonna get bearish real, real quick. And we're not gonna hold this level in here. So because this is our inflection point between these two counts, for everybody that's extremely bearish out there, holding on to the fear mongering news and so forth, right? That's the C wave that's gonna happen. And that's that capitulation that's gonna move towards the downside immediately. And it's gonna happen fast, which means that this level right here probably won't even be respected. And, or if it is, it's gonna be a dead cat bounce. And so I actually, when we come into this area, if you, we wait and just are a little bit more patient to see the pivot there, then that pivot can offer really great buying opportunities and higher probability execution with an invalidation that's much tighter to be able to capitalize on the move up to 45K. So, but if I just catch that drop right into this move, then I'm exposing myself to price just dropping straight through it and then getting stuck in that trade or getting a stop triggered immediately without being able to de-risk on that trade, okay? So these are the two counts that I see. I'm biased more towards the bigger ABC towards the upside here. But if you notice here in the short term, they both move to the downside. And this is what I call count overlaying. It's where I overlay the patterns in the markets and we see where both patterns move together. And in this case here, they both are likely to move towards 22 to 21.6K. So that's what we're gonna dive into next here is I'm gonna go down to the daily and then we'll go down to the four hour as well, or the one hour after that to kind of show you this breakdown. And inside, we're on a daily time frame right now, and this drop here comes off as a better three-wave move than it does a five-wave move because this move right here really had a high retracement. Now, it doesn't come back into wave one, so technically, according to rules, it does qualify as five, but it's pretty ugly to try and break it all up as five waves. So I like it as a much better three-wave structure. And I just wanna highlight that, that usually helps us determine the probability of us moving towards the larger C wave that takes us down to you know 12K versus it being an ABC. But in this case, it doesn't because the move all the way down to 12K can start out correctively. It does not need to be impulsively. If this was a, a strong five wave move though, I would give higher probability towards the 12K target. Right now, for, for what I'm looking at, I think that we've got some pretty good support sitting about $22,000 for us to be able to pivot off of here. All right, so that brings me into right now, are we already in the start of that move towards the downside? I've actually got these counts already lined up, so let's just go ahead and bring these up. Here's my daily count. And again, I'm always looking at the bull and the bear scenarios. That way I can identify where the inflection points are at. And inflection points become very crucial to proper trade management because they become take profit levels and then they get, once we surpass them, they can become invalidation zones as well. And so according to our system, that's how we, a lot of the trade management side of how we do things 
aka take profit zones, and also being able to um, look at probability shifts, and then de-risk trades and raise stop losses all come into play with these inflection zones. So on this move here with Bitcoin on the daily chart, I, I'm looking at both counts moving towards the downside here, but we've got a bullish order block that we can find support on and we can kick sideways. So what that means is like we could look for something like this, a, a big B wave here. The bigger the B wave, the more aggressive the market in that direction. Very important to understand. Whereas if we get a small B wave, then we're, it's likely that this C wave is going to draw down lower. And now it becomes much harder for us to reclaim some of these more bullish zones up, up here. So I'm looking at just an ABC. We're already in the wave one here where we can drop right underneath this bullish order block and not even respect it. Just take it out, find it as a as resistance for our wave two, and then move down in a nice five wave manner. So that means in both cases here in the short term, I would like to be more positioned short. And then you'll, I'll show you how I'm looking to do that here down on the one hour time frame next. And I've already posted the trades down all the way on the three and 15 minute time frame for Bitcoin for uh, scalp trades this morning inside of the group coaching discourse where I post all trade setups as well that I'm taking. So let's go down into the one hour time frame here next. And we can see this nice rejection um, after taking the liquidity above our previous A wave over here, as well as this uh, bearish order block. So that's a nice rejection where this leg is likely going to need a partner leg to it. And that's how we can most likely move all the way down to basically 26.4K here. We'll tighten that target up even more so by bringing up the one hour count. Now, the one hour count here, what I'm looking for is that we're already done with this connecting ABC or WXY running flat here. And we're looking to connect down to the one to one at 26.4K. So how does this fail? Because again, always a bull and a bear count. I want to know how this fails. And if we get a really big B wave right here, then we can start to scale sideways instead and consolidate in order to take another C wave towards the upside. So this leg, I'm treating it like it's the start of something towards the downside now and positioning myself for uh, shorts in that regards. But if all of a sudden this retracement starts mm -hmm. to become too big, then more than likely the probability is going to shift that we're actually recovering and we're gonna move up for this C wave. And why that makes sense for us to do something like that is that we never took the liquidity above this previous high here. We just did a little double top reversal there and a hard rejection. And so there's still a liquidity zone where we can easily consolidate sideways, take the liquidity and then reject back towards the downside. In both cases though, I want you guys to see this that I'm still going to be looking for a partner leg to this move right here. So even if I move up as an ABC, I'm still going to be looking for that partner leg. Okay, so there's still going to be that drop down. So if I miss this trade and I can't capitalize on that short towards the downside, I'll be looking for it over here again. And once that fills out, there's our three wave move that then leads back into our daily count. Okay, so ABC down to 26.4K. And now we open up that daily count again and we say, okay, there's the first leg. Is it the first leg of our A, B, C? And we can continue moving up sideways and we've recovered by doing a sideways range here that's respecting this bullish order block at 26.3K. Or are we going to maybe turn this into an impulse instead of an ABC, giving us our wave one here? that doesn't respect our bullish order block and comes straight down. So being positioned for a short here now, so long as the smaller time frame doesn't recover, where well, there's a good chance that we're gonna at least come down into 26.4K um, and maybe even underneath that. And if we come underneath it, I'll continue to hold that short for our one to one extension and target all the way down to that 21.6 to 22.3K uh, level that we talked about on the weekly time frame. Okay, so that's my plan overall with Bitcoin here. And I'm going to go back down to the one hour, give you guys the invalidations. But this move here is I'm treating it as the start of something that that becomes invalid if we retrace beyond twenty seven thousand six hundred and thirty six dollars. So any sort of a retracement up right now 
looking for a move like this, which is only a half of a percent stop on that, basically, if we can get into the 0 0.5, 0 0.618, and has a really nice risk to reward ratio on that as well. As always, not financial advice, you guys. This is just my system and how I'm executing it to show you guys, give you an example of how it works so that you can see if you wanna learn how to navigate the markets in the same manner with a systematic way of doing it, i.e. rules and guidelines that you follow consistently so that your actions are consistent. And when your actions are consistent, your results become consistent, okay? And we've got a total of seven strategies inside of this system. So we're trading up and down on the market, um, taking advantage of counter trend trades as well as trend trades. So it, Kind of caters to both sides in that regards but i teach everybody to master one strategy at a time as to not overwhelm yourself and to also keep your actions consistent so um, that's a little bit about the system there and you guys seeing the execution of it this uh, incorporates la wave as the pattern identification side of it but we also incorporate ict concepts into it as well as two other components so there's four components together that make it a more unique and more effective trading system than just utilizing la wave by itself okay all right, so I want to go over to DXY and end off with that because they have an inverse correlation and we've been looking for a rejection on, um, on the DXY since we hit this W wave high. So I've been looking for us to just take the liquidity above this W and then reject back underneath the previous high at 105.7 and then get a market structure break at 104.4. Um, so that's what this short over here has been waiting on per the no inner short after liquidity grab and rejection back under 104.4. But surprisingly, we've actually hung up outside of that level here a little bit longer than expected. We Last time we talked about this was uh, back on the 27th and we would just gotten this nice rejection. I was like, oh, that actually looks like it's going to be the start of our move here. Um, but sure enough, we've, we've swung back up. And so this move here, basically as of this morning, just kind of looking at this, uh, th that move right there, I'm actually went back and I pulled some different extensions and saw that I've got really nice confluence sitting at 107.78. And that confluence comes from two things. It comes from a ABC structure where the most selling that took place in this whole rally here was is splitting up this move right in half. That tells me that it's most likely a w or an ABC or a WXY structure. And so when I pull a one-to-one -one using that those pivots, you can see my pivots here, I get 107.8. And then I come back here and I look at my WXY and I'm treating this WXY as an expanded flat WXY. Okay, that's new age Elliott for you guys. So if you're classical, then that probably doesn't even exist. But in, in crypto and Forex and in the new markets, it definitely 100% does. And it's the way that I navigate the market. And so I pulled the extensions on that too. And expanded flats love 1.618. So there's my 1.618 in pink, and that falls at 107.77. So really nice confluence between those two there. Uh, if we go beyond that, then things are going to start to shift. I might have to look at this being the end and this being the start of something different. But for now, uh, I'm still holding on to the assumption that we are going to end up rejecting back down. And now the new level to reject underneath is going to be the previous high we broke, which is 105.6 rather than 104.4. So I'm going to change that to 105.6. And... I'll look for that short once we get down under there. And again, if we go over 107.8, then I might need to start reassessing something different. One thing really worth taking note of too in here is that if you're playing around with the TDI or with RSI um, or anything that gives divergence, divergences in real time, you need to get good at because they don't always, a lot of times they don't work out in real time. And I wanna show this um, as you come into this level here. Like there was bare divergence that was building and present here. And it quickly reset itself with hidden bullish divergence um, for that continuation towards the upside. So you really wanna be cautious of that as well as like how quickly the price is moving against TDI. It's just a little tip for you guys to pay attention to in real time because these indicators are based off of candle closes, which means it's a lagging indicator. It's gotta wait for candles to close. Um, and it's not necessarily projecting things forward like say Fibonacci or channels or trend lines are, okay?
And so uh, I'll leave it at that, you guys. I appreciate you tuning in today, give you a little idea on Bitcoin and DXY. Let me know what altcoins you would like me to take a look at uh, down in the comments. Uh, I'm going to do that for Friday's video. So give me some altcoins to take a look at, uh, and I will do the analysis on them and share them up here. I'll choose three altogether. So go ahead and drop those in the comments for me down below. And if you got in value from this video, definitely like the video to help support the channel and then share it over to your other social platforms or discords that you're a part of as well. Um, as if you think that other people can vouch in I'm pulling bad word on it, but um, can gain value from this video as well. There we go. All right, much love, fam. Take care.